Hello everyone. So in this video, I'll be discussing as to how you can prepare effectively and efficiently for paper B. So I'm Shivangi Agarwal and I've been teaching paper B since when it started, which is uh, April 2019 uh, term. Uh, so I have a very good idea about uh, how the examination is conducted. That is one thing. And second and most important thing is what all are the difficulties uh, that students face during their examination and while preparing for the exam. So I have jotted down a few points here for you all. Uh, I've, I'll be making a very short video uh, as to how you can prepare for the exam and score really great marks in paper B. So the very first thing which we have to keep in mind is the time constraint. So it is a 100 marks paper in CM1, CM2, CS1 and CS2 we have paper B. It's an 100 marks paper and on top of it the time which we get is 1 hour 50 minutes for IFOA and 2 hours for IEI and the marks is 100 marks, right? So one very big difficulty or constraint which I have seen students facing over the years is the time constraint that they do not have sufficient time to finish the entire paper but when I say this it's about some of the students uh, but there are again many students who are able to finish the paper on time but how can you do that so I have laid down few tips and tricks for you all the very first and the very important thing is to practice every day so now uh, we have just uh, two months and two and a half months left for our examination so very important factor over here is to practice daily right so make sure you at least give your 1.5 to 2 hours every day on paper B it's very very important that you are spending this amount of time on your paper B why because I've seen students preparing only for paper A and once they finish the entire paper A syllabus then they start their preparation for paper B that is a very big no no you don't have to do that please try to prepare uh, for paper B from day one okay that is one thing make sure second thing your basics are very very clear so when we talk about our programming it is very very important that the basic concepts are up to the mark because I've seen uh, in the recent terms papers of IFO especially that they are giving some questions on our programming which uh, you know involves a lot of uh, strong base in your R programming that is what I can say like looping uh, creating of user defined functions if statements uh, all of these things if you know the theory rightly you can definitely you know uh, write these codes very easily if your basics are really strong so make sure when you start with your syllabus especially in R programming your basic is very very strong you are able to construct uh, maybe one or two lines loop looping or maybe one or two lines of user defined functions these are a very basic thing and basic plots using the plot function line function points function density so all of these uh, functions you are just you know these are very uh, common or maybe these are very uh, you have a very good understanding about the R basics that is one thing which I will try to say Excel basics is still simpler because we do not use a lot of functions in Excel these are just a few basic functions which are used in both CM1 and CM2 all the CM2 might use different functions uh, which are specific to the paper uh, for example to carry out simulations or some distributional functions all of those functions are there so basics should be very very strong before you start with the syllabus right and then practice is again the second most important thing over here every day 1.5 to 2 hours because this if you're practicing daily this will lead to efficiency i've seen students are not able to you know work effectively and efficiently on excel uh, they are not able to type very fast or maybe they are hesitant before writing any particular function similarly in our programming although they understand the theoretical concepts although they uh, might have done uh, this particular assignment before they have done their classes but still they are not very confident while writing any particular function why because they haven't practiced as much as they should have 
so what all things you'll have to practice the first thing for those who are taking tuitions and classes you all are definitely watching all the assignment classes uh, and going through all the classes and maybe doing the assignments along with the teacher right that is what you are doing but that is not sufficient you have to do all practice all the assignments by yourself without seeing the solution try to do that uh, make it a point that every day you sit down for 1.5 hours minimum and try to solve at least two to three assignments at one stretch because that will boost up your confidence in the examination you uh, you should know that you will get a entirely a new question the concepts will be same but the question will be new so you have to construct your own formulas you will have to construct all your uh, your own functions right so you have to have that confidence that whatever assignments you have already done in the class you have to do it again but without seeing the solution so even if you have done it once in the class make sure to do it again for those who are not taking any tuitions who are preparing by themselves for you all i will just say that practice these assignments if you have got the assignments from the institute practice these assignments at least twice on your own minimum of two times which you all ha have to practice again when you are practicing you all know that where you are uh, you are lacking so make sure you mark that particular question so that after you finish the syllabus you can again come back to these particular assignments and study these particular assignments which you have marked the second thing is past papers very very important you all not you all don't have a lot of past papers there are maybe 5 to 6 4 to 5 past terms papers which you all have make sure you do these papers in a mock condition that is 1 hour 50 minutes you sit down and you solve the paper when i say mock condition students who will be appearing who will be taking cs1 and cs2 you all have r programming to prepare for so whenever you write any function uh, or you know you get the solution make sure you copy paste the entire thing into ms word because you have to submit your ms word files finally in cs1 and cs2 also i have seen this very very big thing big mistake with some of the students make is they forget to copy paste the graphs so in r programming they might ask you to prepare some graphs you ha also have to copy paste that graph into your word file so i have seen a lot of students that they forget to paste the graphs in their ms word and they unnecessarily lose 4 to 5 marks that is what you have to avoid make it a point that you do that second thing very very important keep saving the work this will come with habit so when you are practicing at home make sure you are saving your work every 10 to 15 minutes right and lastly uh you have to give the mock exam so if you are taking uh classes or if you are uh, studying somewhere uh make sure you give all the mocks which the uh, which they are giving you so if you are studying from us we are we, we take mocks regularly so make sure you give those mocks properly in again in a mock condition right that is one very very important thing so these are the things which you can practice from the assignments the past papers and the mock exams and whatever extra questions uh you come across or whatever extra questions uh, so the teachers are giving you right so make sure you all practice that 1.5 hours when i say practicing of excel or ms uh, or or r programming this involves self practicing so if you are watching a class if you have taken tuitions and if you are watching a class that does not come within this 1.5 hours because you're just watching the class and you are not practicing it on yourself right if you are practicing then it's great if not please sit down and start practicing lastly very very important thing which i will add over here is that make sure you are using the same laptop or same pc uh, you are practicing on same laptop and same pc as you will do in your examination if you change your laptop or pc at the last moment during your exam it will uh, actually hamper your time because you have been using your laptop or pc since 2 months so you have been accustomed in that particular environment in that particular uh, laptop or pc conditions do not change your laptop at the last moment do not do that that's very very bad for paper b especially right uh, so also i have seen students that they complete the paper a and then they move to paper b that is what you don't have to do because very very important thing for paper b is concepts so if your paper a concepts are really really great then definitely your paper b will improve why because most of the questions you see uh 
दे आर नॉट वेरी मच इन टू आर प्रोग्रामिंग दे आर वेरी नॉट वेरी मच इन टू एक्सेल दे आर नॉट यूजिंग वेरी हाई लेवल फंक्शन ऑफ फॉर्मुलाज ऑफ एक्सेल और आर प्रोग्रामिंग दे आर जस्ट यूजिंग द बेसिक वन बट वॉट दे वॉन्ट वॉट द इंस्टीट्यूट आई एफ ओ एंड आई आई वॉन्ट्स आउट ऑफ यू इज दैट हाउ यू कैन प्रेजेंट योर वर्क इन एक्सेल हाउ यू कैन प्रेजेंट योर वर्क इन आर प्रोग्रामिंग दैट इज वॉट दे एक्चुअली वॉन्ट टू सी सो योर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पेपर ए शुड बी गुड सो वॉट आई सजेस्ट ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स इज दैट वेन यू हैव डन कंप्लीटेड वन चैप्टर ऑफ पेपर ए मेक श्योर यू वॉच द पेपर बी क्लासेज और यू अटेंड द पेपर बी क्लासेज और यू प्रैक्टिस पेपर बी फॉर दैट चैप्टर जस्ट आफ्टर यू कंप्लीट योर पेपर ए बिकॉज फर्स्टली इट विल मेक योर कॉन्सेप्ट स्ट्रॉगर सो वॉट एवर यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर पेपर ए वेन यू आर रेप्लीकेटिंग द सेम ऑन योर ऑन एक्सेल और ऑन आर सो योर कॉन्सेप्ट योर थियोरिटिकल कॉन्सेप्ट विल बिकम स्ट्रॉगर सेकेंडली यू विल योर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्युलर चैप्टर इज वेरी फ्रेश इन योर माइंड सो यू कैन ईजीली यू नो प्रैक्टिस this in excel or r after after maybe 3 4 weeks you will start forgetting about the paper a concepts and then it is very difficult to produce the same thing in excel or r so it's very important that you do that simultaneously you might end your syllabus of paper a and paper b at the very same time but you might take maybe extra one or two weeks but that's a very good preparation strategy which i want which i tell my students to follow right also comes the shortcuts so when i say shortcuts it again comes with preparation for example let's talk about excel so there are a few shortcuts i have made a lot of videos on that as well so there are a few shortcuts for example for renaming the cells for renaming the cells we have a few shortcuts like uh, we have a shortcut like control shift f2 is the shortcut or maybe for you know adding comments on the cells we have a uh, Sorry, for the renaming we have Control Shift F3, and for comments we have uh, Shift F2. So these are the basic shortcuts which you have, uh, which obviously come with preparation. The moment you start preparing, uh, also one more very very important thing which I have seen students missing is that when they are preparing for, uh, you know, they are uh, sitting down for SCS1 or CS2, they forget to write the answer numbers in their Word file. They just simply copy paste the solution from R programming to Excel. You don't have to do that. Make sure you. uh write the answer numbers very very nicely same applies for your excel in excel make sure you're doing one particular question one particular part of the question in one sheet the next particular part so suppose question 2 has part 1 part 2 part 1 needs to be done in one sheet part 2 needs to be done in another sheet so there should be different tabs multiple tabs for each question parts right now let's talk about iai specific students so students who are appearing from iai i will uh, so there are a few uh, uh, changes or you can see a few discrepancies which are not there in the iai portal for example you all will not be able to uh, use the function keys the function keys are disabled for you all uh, similarly escape key is disabled for you all and the right click so these are a few things which you will not be able to use if you are appearing from iai all the function keys f1 f2 so on escape button and the right click you will not be able to use this in your exam so make sure you are preparing accordingly and when you sit down i a specific students when you sit down for prep, uh, preparations and practicing every day make sure you do not use these keys uh, while preparing because especially students who are appearing for cm1 and cm2 you all have to appear in excel so we tend to use function keys a lot especially for making the cell absolute Uh, or keeping it fixed right we use f4 a lot make sure you do not use f4 because you will not be able to use that in the iai portal and you will be facing a lot of difficulties at that point if you haven't practiced in that particular manner of your exam condition right students who are appearing for two papers now so, so suppose i am preparing for cm1 and there are students who are also appearing for cm1 and cs1 together maybe i did not clear my cs1 last term so i'm again again reappearing for the paper for you all it's very difficult obviously to sit down and practice paper b of both cm1 and cs1 or whatever the combination is every day so what i suggest uh, doing to all the students is that you can do suppose there are two papers which you are appearing for right so every day what should be your schedule that every day prepare for paper a uh, of one paper and paper b of the another paper so suppose i am appearing for cm1 and cs1 so today i'll be preparing i'll be practicing uh, cm1a paper a 
and maybe the second half of the day i am doing cs1 b right next day i am doing cm1 b and cs1 a so this should be the idea uh, you should you can follow this is again a suggestion uh, so this can be your day uh, one and this can be your day two so this is how you can actually you know prepare again this is what i suggest it's entirely up to you but do not uh, stop practicing paper b any single day especially now uh, when you have just one and a half months for iei and two to and a half months for ifoa do not stop practicing for uh, paper b because trust me if you are preparing very nicely for paper b you can score above 80 very very easily very easily uh, now very big Constra uh, constraint over here is definitely the time constraint this can only be overcome with practice only right so this is very very important that you do that uh, so i have written down a few points also yes one more very very important thing over here uh, which i see is commenting so what is commenting in your papers if you are appearing from iei or ifoa uh, so basically 10 to 15 marks of your paper consists of comments so for example this is and it might go up to 20 marks for cm2 and cs2 so the question is there and the last part of the question is always a comment comment on the model comment on the suitability comment on how you can improve the model comment on the scenario whatever it is so they want comment on the graph which you have made this will always be four to five marks for each the each of the question which you have right so 10 to 15 to 20 marks is approximately comments so make sure you write your comments very nicely if there if you have been given four marks for your comments make sure you're writing minimum six points for your comments minimum if it is six marks make sure you're writing minimum of 10 points in your comments because and this should be distinctive clear points if they have asked you to explain a graph make sure you first explain the pattern of the graph and then the trend and if it is a comparison with other graph you explain that why you are getting this kind of a graph explain it very very nicely because i've seen students losing out most of their marks in the commenting portion which you have to avoid this will again come with practicing and keeping the theory uh, theoretical mindset open and keeping uh, the conceptual thing should be there right especially for cs to cm2 i've seen a lot of comments and students students are not able to answer they just you know they are in a hurry so they just like two to three lines and they leave it and they don't get any marks so maybe if it's a four mark question they are getting one mark 1.5 marks for that it's a very bad thing you can actually score really nicely in the comments portion so make sure when you are sitting and practicing and if there is a part in the question which asks to comment you sit and write that comment do not just you know uh, say it in your mind say it loudly and write it down so that you are in practice of writing the comments as well i have seen because you are in a in a hurry of writing excel functions or r programming you are you are running the codes that is I, that i understand but i have seen so this is approximately the very very big issue which i have seen for all the students stop doing that please when you practice practice the comments also type down the comments also right so this is very very important thing those who haven't started paper b at all it's no problem take out first three days to uh, build up your basics which is excel and r so if it's excel two days is enough for r programming three to four days build on your r basics and then start with the chapter specific videos make sure if you haven't given time till yet give two to two and a half hours every day students who have been practicing great one and a half hours is sufficient for you right all the basics should be clear assignments mock exams and past papers should be done thoroughly Two, two, two times everything should be done and those who are practicing in R programming uh, make sure you copy paste your solution in word so that you get the hang of it and uh, so mainly what I've seen and again in paper B is that 60 to 70 percent of the paper is generally done by the students right if you are doing 60 to 70 percent of the paper and then the next 30 percent of the paper or maybe one question you can say is difficult 
on a difficult end obviously so you have to pick up your questions correctly so if you are getting three questions if you are getting five questions in cm2 if you are getting three questions two questions make sure you read the question first so that you understand which question have to appear first appear for that question first and then you come to the next question do not end up decorating your solution sheet so much that you don't have any time for the next question so you have to be uh, really uh, quick in your paper from the start from time zero right that is one thing second thing uh, i have seen students are stuck in the middle of the question and they are completely lost they get so they get very nervous very anxious and they are not able to complete the paper they know the paper they might you know they might know all the solution but they just you know they they get very nervous this the only reason is they are not practicing well before the exam or they haven't sit down uh, sat down and given the mock exams correctly in the exam condition so whatever it is even if you uh don't just don't think that you're going wrong anywhere that should not be the logic right always keep this in mind when you are doing any question appearing for any particular sum be very confident because this will generally happen in our programming specially uh even in excel actually because uh we don't know the solution right and we we are just uh, we maybe we are maybe thinking that we are doing wrong if you are if if this is going on behind your back of your mind that i am going wrong somewhere if this is what is there then definitely you will not be able to complete the paper first and secondly you are actually wrong so this uh thing this thought uh which is going at the back of my mind that i am wrong i am wrong this should not be there and this will only come uh with you sitting down and giving papers in mock conditions so for me i will suggest 6 to uh, 10 mocks should be given in full exam condition and when i say exam condition for students who are appearing in our programming r to word you have to copy paste students who are appearing in excel you rename the sheets create a proper word or uh, excel spreadsheet save it that is how you have to do it again very very important thing especially for ifoa students is the zip file so i have seen uh, you when you download the paper you get a zip folder in the zip folder you have the question paper in the form of pdf and you get a spreadsheet generally you get the spreadsheet for cm1 and cm2 what students do is they just open the zip file and they start working in the excel sheet itself there only you have to unzip you have to unzip your folder make sure you keep the excel file on your desktop rename it whatever the naming convention is and then start working on it because if you haven't unzipped the folder and you straight away start working on the excel file you will lose all your work this is again i have seen happening to some of the students which you have to avoid so again if uh, so try to give mock in that way you know you are getting the zip file unzip it and then start working on it right so that also should be done uh again how you can so all of these things which i have mentioned will definitely you know will help you to increase your marks and in paper b and if you are obviously getting above 80 uh in paper b it is definitely you know helping you in clearing the examination so just don't think that paper b is just 30% of the weightage that 30% of the weightage is a very very big thing if you're getting above 25 or maybe even above 22 out of that 30 it's a very great thing right that is one thing and lastly i will just say that please start practicing if you haven't already it's not an issue just that whenever you do something uh whenever you are uh, doing it in uh, in r or maybe in excel writing any functions writing writing any codes by yourself not seeing the solution not seeing the classes make sure you are very very confident because if this is going at the back of your mind that i am not doing right i am not doing correct maybe i've done it wrong maybe i've written one function wrong maybe i've taken wrong inputs if these things are there at the back of your mind then you will not be able to clear your paper so do not do that please start practicing you have to practice every day i've mentioned key points uh, which you know i came across uh, students came across they have come to me and told me so in order to avoid that you have to 
follow these few steps and make sure your paper a concepts are crystal clear then no one can stop you uh, getting very great marks in paper b i have students getting above 90 in fact they are getting 96 in excel so i think that's a very very great thing students getting 90 in cs1 cs2 r programming so it's not a very difficult thing these are the students whose basic is very strong whose concepts are very strong, strong of paper A and they are practicing every day and they have literally sat down and given their exams in mock conditions as well. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll be coming up, we'll be coming up with more videos uh, before exams. But make sure, please, 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 paper B is very simple. Make sure you study every day effectively and efficiently. Thank you so much.